So this is our second day that we were here at Bolgar Park. And um, what we ended up doing is when we got there, we actually went through, toned out all the stations and realized that a good majority of all the valves were not working, not because of the valve problem, it was actually wiring problems. So we went around and we had the tone out valves. We dug a nice good size hole with a digging bar. I mean, it, the dirt was so hard, it was unbelievable. And we had the dig and we had wires, which you'll see in the upcoming videos where they were only maybe half an inch high. Right, it was like I mean, it was just under the barely surface. underneath the soil, coming up and going and then who knows who did this? I mean, so many hands have been in this over the last probably 20, 30 years. It's just been modified and modified and modified. So it was, what an experience. Every time we were doing it, you'll see in the upcoming videos, we were like, what the heck? And the wire nut was just hanging there. And gel caps off and wire connections. It was incredible. Great experience for all the students in the field seeing firsthand, not in a classroom, firsthand of how it is to scratch and dig and find something like a little Easter egg hunt and go, hey, there's a problem. Hey, there's a problem. Oh, wow. And then trying to justify what colors go to what and who was trying to think this all over in the process of it all. Right. The wires ended up being some rainbow of colors. It was red to black would pop up a yellow. Now it's white. So, you know, just to be in the classroom and say, OK, a ohms resistance reading of 1500 is a bad reading. But then to pull up the wires, we pull like Richard said, pulling it up. Wild other wire nut, another wire nut. And once we start eliminating, we see the resistance go down and down and down until it's a usable valve circuit. So that was just, I can't, I don't even know. We can't even, there's no way we could teach that in the classroom. So I mean, that's a great experience. Thing. Awesome. So we'll, we'll catch you on our next video coming up here and our next uh, scene that will be here on version number three when we're hit here on class week three when we're here. Okay, so we determined that our controller needs to be replaced, so we're going to go through the steps on how to replace a controller. Okay, so now we got the new controller in. We had to pull the wires up a little bit. So luckily we had some slack. So what we'll do is we'll remount all these wires, take out these splices here, on the common and on the few. So that's good anytime we can alleviate a wire connection, that's good. And then we're gonna need to mount it. So we'll look back, we'll drill the holes in the wall and we'll get this thing mounted up. 